Now, we followed James Argent's story for quite some time here on Loose Women. There was his battle with his weight and we saw him transform his body after gastric surgery. There is, though, a part of Argent's life that he's still working very hard on and that's his addiction to alcohol and drugs. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, paramedics were called to his home in Essex after he relapsed. I'm very happy to say that Arj is much better and he joins us now for an exclusive interview to tell us how he's doing. Please welcome James Argent. <laughs> Hello, you. Hello. Come and sit good down. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Good how be are you, mate? Uh, how are you? Yeah, do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling OK. Um, it was a shock to the system, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, but you'd have been clean and sober I know, for yeah, so I was long. Clean and sober for uh, just over two years, um, and yeah, it was. You know, I've had to learn a very hard, tough lesson, but um, I haven't let it get me down. You know, I do, I do. It does feel like it was a blip, and I feel like I've nipped it in the bud, and I've got straight back into my recovery. I'm working extremely hard, and I'm putting it first now, whereas before. I put everything else first, and that kind of was just, you know... But you seem to be doing so well. Last time we spoke to you, you were about to go for your gastric surgery, but you really felt you were on top of the drugs and drink addiction. So do you know what triggered it? Do you, do you, looking back, do you know what went wrong? Do you know what? It could be a, it could be a number of things. I mean, I do feel that um, I, I, I did start getting complacent. You know, I felt, if anything, what really went against me is that i become too confident and a bit too cocky, I kind of... And felt great. Yeah, I felt great. And from... if you asked me a few months ago, um, I would have put my house on it that I would never have uh, had a drink again and stuff. But I think that's, that was, you know, that was the downfall, really. Um, you know, how, did it, how did it happen, though? Well, I, you... I, I, I stopped going to meetings. I stopped... Um, I wasn't doing regular counselling. I wasn't doing regular therapy. Is that because um, you I, thought you were better? You thought yeah, you were on top I, I, of it? I, I thought I was better and, like I said, I got complacent, I got a bit too confident. I've got, you know, you've got to remember that you can't... You don't just go to... You don't just reach out for help and, and go somewhere for a month and to, to a rehab or something and, and you're cured for life. It's, it's something that you have to work on for the rest of your life and mm. I had to, to, learn, to learn the hard way. Um, and sometimes I kind of... Um, I like to help others and give advice but then you need to practice what you preach, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm all good. I, I know exactly what I need to be doing and I'm good at telling other people what I need to be doing and, mm. and trying to help others, but you've got to, you've got to do it yourself. And, um, yeah, uh, I just... Um, so did somebody buy you a drink or did you buy a drink or...? No, what? I mean, I, I don't really want to go into too much details no. because it is quite personal and it happened That's quite fine. recently. But, um, but I suppose, you know, you do start to, to get cravings and, and stuff like that and they can come and go and it's just knowing what to do with those, when you get those cravings, you know, make yourself a cup of tea, go for a walk, pick up the phone, speak mm -hmm. to someone, whether yeah. it's your mate, whether it's your sponsor, mm -hmm. family member. And I think I was starting to get cravings maybe over the summer. Mm. Um, That's... And, and I think what it is, is even though um, I was clean and sober for such a long time, if I'm being honest with myself, I probably wasn't really well because I gained something like 11 stone in lockdown. Mm. So even though everyone's like, well done, you know, we'd rather you eat than mm. do anything else, I really clearly wasn't well because I gained so much weight. And then I had a gastric sleeve operation. Yeah. The food was taken away from me. So whereas, whereas before I maybe would comfort eat or I'd act out yeah. on food Swapped and when, you know, for, for the feelings, yeah. then all of a sudden I'm yeah. just like left with, <gasps> I'm not drinking, I'm, you know, so limited with my food, I'm not doing like... And I think that was a bit of a... That, that was, you know, All just a bit much, of a shock. Yeah, yeah once, maybe. And yeah. I think, you know, the, the, you know, having the gastric sleeve operation with Transform Hospital Group, it was honestly the best thing that I've ever done, like, in terms of physically and mm. I feel more confident and happy, but I should have been more prepared yeah. myself um, of maybe, the you know, of my recovery and being more prepared mm. and, and more... And more organised. You're depriving right? yourself of all of everything. At yeah, the same def time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You've also mentioned that you know, sort of loneliness has played a factor in your your relapsing. So not having that, maybe that family that you that you're kind of longing for as well, has that kind of played into that? Do you think? Yeah. Do you know what? I, I'm an extrovert, so I need to be around people all the time. Like I love company. I love either entertaining or I love being entertained. You know, a lot of people's chaos can be from 
being out all the time, like seeing this person. But my chaos actually starts when I'm indoors, alone, bored, yeah. lonely, too much time on my hands. You know, I've always dreamed of having this beautiful... Um, <laughs> I've always dreamed of having this beautiful home in Essex, like down the same road as my mum and dad. I never thought I'd be able to afford it or get it. I managed to do it, but it's a family home and I'm in there in this beautiful big house the house I've always wanted, but I'm in there alone. Mm. You know, no girlfriend, no one's living with me. And it can be tough. And, you know, and, and also with, you know, with what I do, how I earn my money and stuff, there's times where I'm working every day of the week for three months, and then all of a sudden mm. I'm doing one or two things yeah. a week. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, where's my structure? Where's my routine? Yeah. Where's my purpose mm. when I wake up in the mornings? What am I... So I really need to, to to work on all of those things. So what are you doing? To, are you doing anything to try and correct that? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Are so, you in touch with anyone? You going dating or? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, at the moment, I've um, there's like this daytime. So basically, in the or past. Would you, or would you just like a smaller flat? Because I've got a nice small flat. I'll have your. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, <laughs> there's, there's, the there's no there's no wrong or right answer. I could you know I could move. I could move back to Marbella, I could go up north, I could get a smaller place, but, the, you know, your problems are going to follow you yeah. no matter where you go. And, and in the past, I've kind yeah. of escaped and run away and I've gone to Thailand for a few months or I've gone... But this time, I'm in... I'm doing treatment, but I'm doing it whilst I'm living at my house in the reality of things, you know what I mean? Mm. So it's like I'm doing treatment every day, but I'm also still staying at my home every evening. But this time I'm being more structured and, yeah. and, I mean, stuff. Have... and I'm getting to the gym and I'm seeing my friends and it's all yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, you've talked to us before often about the amazing support you have from your family, from your yeah, mum so and your sister, mm. Mark Wright, your best friend, mm. um, and Lydia, who, of course, yeah. you know, you had a relationship with on and off for a long time, mm. but has remained a friend and she's yeah. really helping you still get to Yeah, Lyd this. Lydia's one of my um, best friends. I, uh, I dropped round a little present uh, for her... Uh, daughter Loretta the other day, I got her a first pair of Yeezys, baby Yeezys. <laughs> so Lydia loved that. Lydia was laughing because she went, I've got the fake ones and my daughter's got the real ones. <laughs> but, yeah, I, have to, I have to ask you this question, I can ask you because I've known Go you a on. long time. Is there not any spark of romance between the no. two of you? Because there was once and she's been an amazing support and yeah, she's no, listen, single we were, we were, and you're single. And... No, we were together for like, I think it was like, like eight years mm. and um, there's a lot of history there but We've just we've made it clear to each other that we're just so much better off okay. as friends, and we want to be in each other's lives, you know, forever. But as mates, and maybe I think... she needs to choose a girlfriend for you because she knows you. So oh well. no, she'd be more than happy for me to meet someone. <laughs> yeah. I think it would. Be, yeah, I think she'd be more than happy if I met someone. Well, listen, else. let's talk about happy things because there are good things again. We're really Absolutely. good. You're back on track, and like you said, keeping yeah. up with your your counselling and everything. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll keep in touch with you about that yeah. if you don't mind. Um, but you're starring in the real Dirty Dancing. Yes. So this is on. Um, all four and E4 tonight, yes. nine o'clock. So you're partnered up with Anthea. Just tell us a little bit about it. What are you re enacting? You know what? Uh, the real Dirty Dancing, if you're a, a fan of the movie, you'll absolutely love it. Um, and it's basically the five uh, male contestants are trying to become Johnny, played by Patrick Swayze, of course, yeah. and the female contestants are trying to become Baby. So there's different dance routines. We're acting out scenes and stuff along the way. Um, and it's just so much fun. It comes just at the right time for me. It's a real fun, mm. positive show. Um, I've always loved musical theatre. I love performing entertaining, so it's perfect for me. And I actually think I might surprise people with this show. Yeah, <laughs> I do a, a lot of better mover. than what I think people You're a bit of a mover, <laughs> Art. <laughs> and and you, are you permanently partnered with Anthea? Or is it no, just so, so basically you have different <laughs> partners throughout, uh, but everyone wanted to be with Anthea. Like, yeah. every single male contestant wanted to be with Anthea, but there was only one man who should... Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Anthea's great. Yeah, and it's, um, yeah, it's just such a fun show. Keith Lemon's presenting it with Ashley Roberts. Yeah. And, um, it just come at the right time for me. Good. Well, listen, always lovely to see you. You know you're welcome here any time. And we're sorry about your relapse, but it seems like you're back on track now and yeah. we wish you all the very best Absolutely. with that. Keep on going. And love to your mum and sister as well. Thank and you. Lydia. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Arge.